Hello makers, I'm Joe and next to me is my Ender 3. Now this is still stock. After I did my review, um, I kind of put it aside, was downstairs in my garage, was doing some prints whenever I needed some extra help in printing. But other than that, it was always stock because it worked. And I also never did any videos of upgrades because let's face it, there are a ton of those online nowadays. However, when E3D reached out to me and said that they're launching a new extruder, um, I thought, okay, it's time to upgrade my Ender 3. In comes the E3D Hemera. Now, you might think that I just mispronounced Hermes, no. The name is now called Himera. Uh, name has been changed last minute, um, but don't fret, it's still the same awesome extruder. But rather than being called uh, Hermes for Greek god of thievery, it's now called Himera for the goddess of light. Personally, I would have gone with Zeus because Zeus is the king of the gods and this, this is definitely the king of the extruders. Now, seeing as I'm about to tear down the Ender 3 to do this upgrade, I figured I'd go a step further and also upgrade the main board. One of the things that I don't like about the Ender 3 is the noise it makes. So I went ahead and ordered the new Creality version 1.1.5 board, which has style and silent stepper drivers, um, and just put this all together. So we're gonna head to the bench and we're gonna start opening this box so we can talk a little bit more about what makes the Hemera such an awesome extruder. Now there will be a few different versions of the Hemera. What I have here is the fully assembled direct kit. There's also going to be a Bowden version. Now initially kits will be available and the pre-assembled ones at a later stage. The Bowden kit will be uh, 70 pounds and the direct kit will include the hot side, meaning the hot end. Um, that will be 90 pounds. As you can see, you get everything you need inside that you'll need to have a full extrusion system on the direct version, along with some extra screws, uh, tools and nuts for the assembly to the frames that you will be mounting on. Now, the main advantages of the Hermes are the fact that it has such precise tolerances it allows you to print flexibles pretty much at the same speed you would standard PLA. The cooling fins are also designed in a way to divert the air upwards and outwards in order not to disrupt the air around the printing area should it be used with high temperature materials. Now, since the body of the stepper motor is designed in-house, part of the mechanism sits within the housing, making the whole extruder more compact and since it uses IGAS bushings, it also does not require maintenance. Now E3D has spent a lot of time preparing for this launch, asking a select group of people to design upgrades for printers already on the market. I was one of those lucky ones, and if you have followed me on Twitter, you'll see I was quite busy. Now for the upgrade, I started off by opening the cover for the mainboard, taking out all the wires, um, before I did that, I, I usually take a few photos prior to this assembly as that gives me a reference just in case I need to see which wire goes where and in which way. Now the Creality machine for some reason has 12 volts written on the hot end and heat bed inputs on the main board. However, the machine uses a 24 volt system, so make sure you use that. The new board that I am using is a direct replacement, so it goes in the same way as the previous one went out. Then I completely took apart the hot end assembly, including the carriage and its wheels in order to mount the printed base plate on the carriage. Prior to mounting the base, I poked holes through the, well, through the screw mounting holes and inserted three M3 by eight screws. Once done, I aligned the base plate to the carriage, inserted the bottom roller with the eccentric nut and secured it. I mounted the carriage on the rail and assembled the two top rollers. Once that was done, it was just a matter of adjusting the eccentric nut at the bottom to remove any wobble. Next, take the Hemera and secure it with those three M3 by eight screws. Now, when I recorded this footage, I had not yet redesigned the base to include the modular probe mount. At this point, it was still fixed. However, the updated files are available on the My Mini Factory. Uh, check links in the video description. You might need a couple of extra square nuts and M3 by eight screws to use the modular mount. After running the wires through the mounts and securing the BL touch, I plugged in the stepper motor cable. Now, seeing as I wanted better cooling for this build, I used the four 40 millimeter blower fan, which is the same that comes on the Sidewinder X1 and the CR10S Pro. Now, in order to make all those parts easy to print, the fan that can be secured to the blower fan either by hot glue or some super glue. Next, I used the sleeve to run it through the cables in order to keep everything tidy. Once that was done, I secured the sleeve with a couple of zip ties on the base mount. 
Now I could have spent some more time to change the connector plug so they would fit neatly on the board, but since it was short notice, the pre-assembled connectors did the job just fine. For the stepper motor cables, you have to keep in mind that you might need to change the direction of the stepper motor rotation because it is a dual gear. Now in order not to tinker with the firmware, you can simply plug the connector the other way around. For the BL Touch to work, I ordered a breakout board which can be found at TH3D in order to use the pin 27. I prepared the cable ends with the appropriate connectors and plugged everything in. Once checked, it's time to clip on the belts and tighten them using the X-Idler. After downloading the TH3D Unified Firmware and modifying it, the printer was good to go. Now I will leave a link in the video description to the firmware I modified. However, please note that just cause it worked on mine, it might not work on yours. And I take no responsibility should it destroy, blow up, implode, or melt your Ender 3. Also, the firmware is modified for 1.1.5 board and only with BL Touch, just saying. Now, I am not one to do a technical review. I leave such things to people who are much more competent on that than me. However, I still wanted to test the Hemera and I didn't want to do a test for quality because I know what A3D nozzles are worth in terms of print quality. Um, so I just wanted to focus on the prominent fact that E3D claim you can print flexibles um, as the same speed as PLA. Now this meant that I had to forego excellent print quality and focus solely on speed and reliability at long periods. So I grabbed some Ninja Flex, which is the most flexible filament I have. It was also out in the open for a couple of months without a bag. And I loaded an iPhone 8 cover G-code. I set the speed to 60 millimeters a second and started printing. The first layer went down like an absolute dream, but that was set to 50% of the speed. Second layer came and it just started performing beautifully. Now, while it performed beautifully, there were two things that I wasn't happy with. First being, there aren't enough retractions going on. I specifically set my retraction distance to two millimeter at 40 millimeters a second, as I wanted to push it as hard as I can. But the case is done in a way where little retractions are needed. And secondly, the print was a bit too fast for Ninja Flex, and therefore it didn't give enough time for the filament to cool down, resulting in curling. So this also told me that it's, you know, it, speed is not the limitation, the filament might be. But I went ahead and downloaded the Wallet STL. I set the same parameters and started printing. Now this time, however, bar a few tweaks to the slicing profile, which was thrown together in a few seconds, the print turned out absolutely amazing. Not amazing in terms of best quality amazing, but Ninja Flex at 60 millimeters a second on an Ender 3 amazing. Now granted that the 60 millimeters a second won't be constant due to turns, jerks, acceleration, and so on, but I could have easily amped it up. Now the limitation here is not the extruder, but the inertia of the weight and the mechanics of the printer, along with how big the print is and how much time the filament needs to cool down. So then just out of fun, I decided to print some PLA uh, because I only printed flexibles with it. So I printed Vampire's Castle from my manufacturing Wizards Voodoo. Now, obviously I wouldn't expect anything but gorgeousness as it's a beautiful PLA color. However, I had someone online say I should print this in Ninja Flex. Now, while my profile wasn't ready to try that sort of feat, I felt confident enough to try it in TPU. So I used some filament to vertigo gray, flexible, and started printing. I honestly had my doubts initially that the print would actually succeed, but succeed it did. Uh, once again, the profile needs some tweaking, but other than that, the quality for a TPU print is absolutely insane considering how intricate the model is. Then finally, also just for fun, I printed a vase in vase mode at 100 millimeters a second. Yes, the quality is pretty much abysmal. Uh, it is 100 millimeters a second Ninja Flex in vase mode, um, but it printed nonetheless. And it also turned out to be enormously satisfying because now I have a vase that I can stay punching and squishing and, and as it's my stress vase. Now, my personal opinion, this has got to be one of the best extruders I have ever used since getting into 3D printing. Not only is it affordable, but it is precise, reliable, and consistent. I have done upgrades for my Sidewinder X1, which is compatible with the Genius, for the CR-10S Pro, which is also compatible with the CR-10 Max, 
For the Tiva Tarantula Pro, which should be compatible with the Flash and also the Nereus. And I hope I'll have time to do more, as it's definitely going to be my go-to extruder for any upgrades. Of course, as long as space and mechanics allow it, because ultimately it's not a small extruder. Um, so you do need the space to actually mount it on. That is it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will leave links to, well, everything I printed, everything I spoke about, all the upgrades, the instructions, the uh, Hemera itself. Um, so yeah, you guys can check them out. Don't forget to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. And as always, happy making, guys.